Hi guys, welcome to All Things Korean. This video is going to be a mini history lesson using Korean music or a song specifically. And as the title suggests, it's not going to be K-pop. Um, this song that I'm about to introduce to you is one of my favorite Korean songs and it was released in 1970, which is literally 50 years ago and way before my time. Although K-pop is huge these days, that's not all there is to Korean music. And I wanted to share a bit more of the other things that you might not know about Korean music. And hopefully once we go over the song, you'll have a better understanding and appreciation of Korean culture, history, as well as music. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some information about the genre. Um, about the artist and then we're going to take a quick look at the lyrics and see what we can learn from the lyrics what aspects of Korean culture or history can we learn from these lyrics and I hope you enjoy this video as much as I did in preparing it so the song I'm going to share with you today is called Ashi by Inida Imija is the artist's name, Ashi is the title, which means lady in English. And it's a song about a woman who is looking back at her life at presumably a very old age. Now, as I said, this song was released in 1970 and the genre is something called trotu or trot in English. And this is a very unique genre that you probably won't hear in a lot of other like Western pop music. So let's go over this first really quickly. What is trot or trotu? Trotu originated during Japanese colonial rule. So that's the early 20th century. And according to Google or Wikipedia, it can be defined by its repetitive uh, rhythms and you know, there's like a, a certain vocal technique to it, but it's all technical terms. I think the most effective way to get yourself familiar with this genre is to just go on YouTube and listen to a couple of songs and you'll instantly get that vibe. I think generally this genre is more considered an old people genre. A lot of younger Koreans think of it as old fashioned music, but the genre actually made a comeback in the 2000s when younger singers, younger and attractive singers like Chang Yoon Jung, Park Hyun Bin, etc. These people also made an attempt at trot music and they made it really popular again. And this song that I'm sharing with you today is from 1970, but um, you know, trot music came from decades before that. Now, when you're talking about trot, you can't leave out Imita. She is one of the most influential singers when it comes to trot music. She is actually considered one of the first divas of Korea. She sold millions of albums and actually released more than 2,000 songs during her singing career. That's not easy to do. Imija was born in 1941, so she was born during Japanese colonial rule, and she was the first South Korean singer to perform for a North Korean audience. That's how big of a deal she was and is. Uh, now, before we begin the rest of the video, obviously you need to listen to the song first. So I'm going to play it for you here, and I'll leave a timestamp in the comments so you can skip to the end if you want to.
personally think it was so beautiful. It's one of my favorite Imita songs, although I don't really know a lot to be honest. And now I hope you have a general sense of what the genre is like. Now for the highlight of this video personally is uh, the lyrics. We are going to go over the lyrics. I'm not going to analyze every like, you know, grammatical structure and everything one by one. I will leave a translation of the lyrics in the description box, but I just wanted to go over the lyrics in general and, and see and, and try to talk about what it means or what we can take from it. So the general story is that a, a woman, the narrator, is looking back at her life. She's reminiscing about the day she got married and the day she went on some excursion with her husband. And the, the main subject of the song is a road. She keeps talking about this road, the road on which she got married, the, the road where you know she went out on an excursion with her husband, and the hook, the last two lines of each verse say that she is either returning to this road or she is making a return on this road. So she's come full circle after living a whole lifetime and she's returning to the road looking back on all these memories of when she was a young woman. There are two important things that I think we can take away from the lyrics of this song. Number one is we get a slight glimpse into what a traditional wedding was like in Korea. If you look at the first verse, which depicts her wedding day, she says, So, kama, what is that? A kama is a human-powered vehicle. Wikipedia calls it litter, although I've never heard of that word before. So basically, it's like a box that you sit in and it has four sticks you know, sticking out from the box and then a group of four guys or two guys, depending on, you know, the situation. Um, so people are like holding up the sticks and carrying you in the box. Normally it, it's for more like higher social statusy people, but I guess if you're a bride on your wedding day, you know, you, you're like the, the bell of the ball. And, you know, traditional Korea was a very um, conservative, uh, Confucian is... Conf conf Confucianism, okay, was the, like the big religion in Korea. So um, the, I think the ceremony took place at the bride's place and then she would follow the groom to live in the groom's place and the groom would, you know, he would parade down the street or whatever on a horse and the bride would follow on the kama. So these lyrics serve as a mini lesson on Korean culture, what traditional weddings were like. Obviously, no one gets married like that anymore, so you can tell that the song is really, really old. The next thing about the lyrics that I want to talk about is what her reaction is to the sunset at the end of every verse. So in the first verse, she talks about her wedding day, which is supposed to be a really happy occasion. The second is when she was just a newlywed, she went out on a walk or an excursion or a trip with her husband. It's a date, right? It's supposed to be a good time. But instead, you know, that, that bird in the distance is not chirping merrily. She hears the, the birds as weeping. And the last line of each verse is 노을이 설구나. She is looking at the sunset after living a whole lifetime. And she sees it as sorrowful. It's not like I've lived a good life. She only sees sadness despite all that good stuff. You know, she hears birds chirping in the background and she hears it as weeping. She looks at a sunset and she was like, oh, what a sad sunset when she is, you know, coming to an end in her life. 
and you can feel this sense of very profound sadness but it's not the kind of sadness you feel like for example when your pet dies or when you get rejected by your crush this is a it goes a lot more deeper than that and so the second lesson we can learn from the lyrics of this song is a very unique korean sentiment called han it's an emotion that really really cannot be translated into english there is no there's just no equivalent for it it's not sadness okay sadness i feel is a very superficial emotion and i've tried googling the term both in english and in korean and you know it's it's a sadness yes but it's mixed with you know resentment and longing and grief and mourning and it's just this really complex emotion that you feel you know when when something so important is taken away from you and i to be honest i don't think it's a modern uh, emotion that younger people can feel really these days because it's more associated with older generations particularly you know our grandparents and older think about the the early 20th century we've had 30 years of japanese colonial rule you know they weren't nice colonists they ravaged our country they burned down our palaces they they raped our women they they basically just stole or just took away all of our cu cultural identity koreans weren't even allowed to speak korean or have korean names during this period of time and after that you know we were liberated in 1945 after world war ii but then five years later there's the korean war you know families were ripped apart the country was divided until today we're still divided and think about all the hardships that they had to endure the war obviously the literal fear for your life hunger poverty less than a century ago korea was considered a third world country so if you think of all that koreans had to experience their their lives just being shredded and and just trampled on their their sense of identity had to be compromised and just you know can you explain that with sadness or sorrow it's a lot more than that you know and that's that's what i get from this song you know you see a a an old woman presumably and she's looking back at her wedding day you know the good times that she supposedly had but she doesn't look at it with like a, a fondness she doesn't see it as a good time apparently you know she still she still has that hun in her that she just can't let go and to be honest i can't say i really relate to this song i'm way too young for that i think but you know with this when you just imagine what this woman might have gone through in her lifetime to be looking back at her wedding day and feeling feeling sadness it's not to say that she had an unhappy marriage it's probably something a lot more profound than that something that we really can't grasp immediately but we can all but we can sort of sense that this woman has had some deep deep scars uh, i'm not the most poetic person so i'm not really doing a good job of you know describing the sentiment but i hope you get an idea of what i'm trying to to say so that was the song for today that was my mini history lesson i gave you a quick recap of what the genre is about this influential singer and then we took a look at the lyrics and learned about a piece of traditional korean weddings and also of a korean sentiment called han i hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative originally i wanted to do like my five favorite songs per decade and do one for like the 70s 80s 90s and so on but i feel like this song deserved its own video i had a lot to say about it if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you thought in the comment section below would you like to see another one on the 80s or 90s and 2000s do you have any other you know favorite trot songs that you want to share with the rest of us um let me know thanks for watching this video and i will see you in the next one 다음 영상에서 만나요.